before right now to do that and I can think of any way out of it so the Holy Spirit just could there's only two hours left I don't see what the problem would be but it's a miracle it really truly is so we're wrapping up we're finished second book of Chronicles the Lord has left the land with 70 years of Sabbath nobody will hold the Sabbath they will not do the Lord's commandments and statutes and observances. So, land, land will do it without them. We we're, probably weren't letting it rest every seventh year besides the millions of sins. So, like it said, to fill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah to lamb it. I enjoy your Sabbaths for as long as you may desolate sheep. It's like one of my favorite things so far. It's like a proverb, right? But we're getting into the book of Ezra now. It, I can see there's a lot of names. I'm not going to even attempt to try to kind of figure so much unless something sticks out. But We'll see what this says. I don't know. The book of Ezra, chapter 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and put it also in writing, saying, Say Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God is in Jerusalem. So, this very powerful man, Cyrus, king of the most powerful place on earth at the time, because you see what just happened to Jerusalem and Judah, he gets some visits, or he start his ear suddenly gets open. He has everything, so this is what he has left to gain, and he realizes it. And he says, Who's there left to build a temple for the Lord of Israel, the God of Israel? And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help them with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside their free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Who knows? He may have had some dream. He may have had three things happen in a row. Who knows what happened to him? But something. He struck. Because he's like, hmm. Hmm. Persia, Iraq. Um. Who's that God? That one. With the wheels, his feet. It's kind of like a, an Anunnaki one. But he, that's who he, this guy worship. He has no business. Except that, uh, somehow. Uh. He was doing something right and just and stuff like that. He wasn't attacked by the Lord in a dream. He wasn't attacked by anybody in person. He just, he just, uh, something happened to him. And Jeremiah has something to do with it. So that's good. Then was 
said the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin, the priests, the Levites, with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. I wonder if they're going to try to do that now. That Netanyahu is just talking with them. Just talking to the UN, making a speech. He's like, oh yeah, we're friends, we're friends now. I mean, we're friends with them, you know, all of the, you know, Arabs and stuff, don't worry. Yeah, we totally just made a new peace agreement. So, that only means one thing. They're going to build that temple. Is he going to start, start quoting Ezra? Telling everybody to come on down? Come on. To go up and build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. You think that's the next step he's going to do? Sounds like it. Look, it's Ezra. This book has already been supernatural. It's Yom Kippur today, right? So, here's something I cannot figure out. When it's talking about... Great Hezekiah, right? Who's this Josiah? Yeah, Hezekiah. In chapter 29. And it started with Yom Kippur. I mean, Rosh Hashanah, which we just had, right? Nine days ago. And then it leads up to the word of atonement in verse 24 of chapter 29. And... Back in 17, it says, Now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify, and on the eighth day of the month came they to the porch of the Lord. So, I, oh, I never realized uh, there was a day of atonement. I mean, I never did it, never observed it. I knew that there was Rosh Hashanah and then the most I could keep up with Sukkot was next, right? But it's good. Like I said, I may not have been able to keep up with it if it was any second before now. I cannot believe. So yeah, and you're supposed to fast and um, repent. Repent for your sin and iniquity all day. It's like a solemn. I, I'm just doing like another Shabbat. Like, no light. I'm not over the internet, though. I admit that. I... I keep the electricity. That's what I'm shooting towards someday here soon. Maybe I should just fast from now on on Shabbat if I can. It wasn't that bad. But is this what they're talking about right here in chapter 29? Atonement, verse 24, which is today, which is Yom Kippur. This is a supernatural book. How does this happen? I haven't figured out the exact dates because this talks about eight days later, but now it's like nine, but eight and nine are like very close. And I haven't looked up the comments on that further, although it's probably obvious and it probably is, or it isn't. I don't know, but this book of Chronicles, I really had to look a lot up since I could understand it a lot better than the first book of Chronicles. This is full of names, and now I'm looking into this Ezra, and this second chapter is nothing but names. I'm, I don't know if we'll do that now. Then I said the chief of the fathers of Judah, and Benjamin, and the priests, and the Levites, with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. So the only reason I'm saying that is because this is uh, the case. Well, and it's right on time. I was doing the description and the picture today for the Yom Kippur. And I kind of thought it was when I was reading it because it was already Yom Kippur. But now um, I'm just bringing it up again. But... What I'm trying to say is, if they really did, if Netanyahu really did make peace, it's going to be a matter of minutes before he's on TV going, 
quoting this this one verse verse 5 he's going to do it watch anyway and all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver with gold with goods and with beasts and with precious things beside all that was on the altar <clears throat> Oh, cool. Let's see. Yeah, I'm stuck on the uh, these vessels. Right? Because um, what I just went over was when Ahaz, he did something in particular. He didn't use them. He didn't party with them like Bel Shazar. It says, and it, it doesn't it says he cut them. It doesn't say he he cut them and made them into other molten in, images. It just says he just, it, what's that word? It just vandalized it. Like he's just, and now, then we just heard what Nebuchadnezzar, that was it, 70 years. It's going to be 70 years lit in the land rest. And he just took it all. So this guy, who is not even Hebrew, um, heard about Jeremiah. He is maybe just on the basis of wisdom itself, he has made this decision. Because um, we don't hear that. It says the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, but it doesn't say how. It's very interesting, right? Could have been just from seeing Jeremiah, you know, who knows? Okay. Also, Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem. <laughs> Stole. <laughs> These, how kind the words are brought forth. Cyrus returned what was stolen. It says Cyrus brought forth the vessels that Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem. See, it's very fair. That part, that part, right? And put them in the house of his gods. Oh. Uh-oh. Even those did King Cyrus of Persia bring forth by the hand of Mithridath, the treasurer, and numbered them unto Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. And this is the number of them. Thirty charges of gold, a thousand charges of silver chargers. Thirty charges of gold, a thousand charges of silver. Nine and twenty-nine. Nine and twenty-nines. Thirty basins of gold, silver basins of a second sort for and other vessels, 8,000. All the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400. All these did Shesh Bazaar bring up with them of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. <clears throat> it sounds like they returned them with their stuff. Because the spirit of the Lord was stirred up in Cyrus. We're not sure how, except he heard about Jeremiah. Because it's unusual. Why would he care about any of this? So, chapter two is going to, I would start now, but it talks about the children of the province that went up out of the captivity. So here's another captivity. This is the second like big captivity besides Egypt. This is like number two, huh? 
And then it just goes on and on. These people's names. I'm not going to start with that right now. Probably unless um, within the next hour, I find it's in my best interest to do this instead of eating. Because I have like an hour left. I can't believe it. Look how the Lord mixed me up. Twisted me up. So I wouldn't even be concerned about it. I knew it was happening like a couple days. I wasn't like too concerned about it. But I can't even remember ever fasting my life. And I'm 56 now, so on purpose, not on purpose, none of it. Yep, praise our Lord. Got a lot of names to go through, and we'll find out specifically why this is here. I think I was trying to do with the Chronicles. Whoa, there was a lot of, a lot of neat stuff. Look, I'm also very confused because I said I was going to list the, I didn't find that particular one, I will look for it, but the list of, there was only like three good kings, right? Out of like 40 or 50 or 60, maybe like five so-so, right? Both good and evil, not following. I don't want to say evil, that's kind of harsh, but oh, it is what it is, but. All those, all these pieces of story, so, all these names, I guess we can just kind of, I don't know what will stick out, but it's not the whole thing. And then we go into Nehemiah, and then Job, and then Psalm, and then... Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. I was looking for that. I couldn't find it. I was like, are people, is this like, a, um, I'm like, how can it be? Because I heard it my whole life. So, I'm like, how can it be a canon? But look, it's like four pages long. <laughs> it's after Proverbs and before. Song of Solomon. It's kind of hidden. But wow, this whole thing is mostly the Old Testament. Zephaniah, Haggai, Haggai. That one says, um, you do all this stuff, you work, you do all this toil, but your, your purse has holes in it. <laughs> it's true. If you don't follow, it's true, it'll happen. You can make all kinds of money. Look. Which, where did it go? What was I doing all that work for? What what happened to it? I can't afford normal things. Like that. I think I just heard that recently. Somebody else talking about that. But I didn't know about that before. But I can't really put listen to too much other people right now talking about too much other things because I mean I guess I could but if I didn't know anything about the Bible uh, I don't know just it's interesting how I can even deal with it read it it's kind of hard I'm not you know but and it, it could be that if people actually really do read it themselves that the Holy Spirit just lays on them just like scanning the words and asking the Holy Spirit to kind of process it because I don't know how anybody gets through this to be honest with you to be honest especially before the internet especially with that strong's concordance but it's kind of fitting together can you imagine, like, if this book of Ezra was like, okay, and they're just going to concentrate on, like, I don't know. And, and, oh, this is what I was trying to say, sorry. Like, these two names. Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, was that it? Or, and they were the ones that were related to Athaliah. And one was the brother, and one was her husband. They had, like, the same no, the husband's brother and 
No. Her brother and her husband had the same name. And then you go and look up to try to, you know, put a chart up. Not of the, just the, the bad kings, just of the kings of the north in Israel and of the south in Judah. And wouldn't you believe it? I am way confused more now than I was when I figured that out because it lists both of those. Um, and just recently it did it again. It lists them both as kings of Judah. But it clearly states the other guy's a king of Israel. But when you look on the chart, it says they're both kings of Judah. I'm very confused about that. So some of the things in my description... I don't have time to make a description at the moment. What I'm really doing is just pointing the things out, like, that are sticking out to me. And it's so not Ahaz, King of Israel. It was something else. Anyway, I just wrote it down and I'm already, because it's too much, right? I just did um, little outlines of like eight chapters in a row in the names there's so many names and you do you have to you have to just do like one chapter at a time how can you let me just try to find out what i was talking about was it amaziah and they told him, don't do it because Ephraim, Israel's not going to cooperate with you. Ephraim, they're no good anymore. Ephraim, especially. And then it winds up something. But it, that's not what I'm trying to talk about. Somebody with the J's. Is it the J? back too far. Anyway, I just wrote it down. I'll put it in the description of this. Oh my gosh, look, I just shut it like I was done or something. Okay, it's because I haven't eaten maybe. Yeah, that's an excuse for it. <laughs> okay. I wasn't even done. So Cyrus gave back the vessels and the amounts. Oh yeah, I did. I read it. It was so short. That's why. So the prince, they're not calling him a king. They sent this guy back with the vessels. His name is Shesh Bazaar. You like that bazaar? They like the Azar. And I, I wish I'll find out what that means, Azar, because everybody has that one. The Babylonians. It must mean there. It must be after a deity or means king something some part of a king. The part the word means king. Suffix. But anyway. I'm going to write it in this description anyway, even though it's back in Chronicles, because I didn't even make that, I'm going to try to make that the thumbnail and big part of the description that we'll see how this goes because I am yet confuse that about those two kings' names that they have on those lists. Because if we're starting to get into all these names and already have that um, standing out, we'll see what happens. And I wish my memory was like a trap. No, I don't want Neuralink. It's not not like that. But look, look at the, the words that I see coming up. Elam, um, Jericho, Ramah. 
These are places that are still there, right? But I'll be frustrated I don't remember everything I read because I tried in to place when I started reading this. Remember, I had the map out and everything. And I was like, okay, this place, that place. And then it got out of hand. I couldn't do it anymore, guys. But we'll see if the I will ask the Lord to give us um, understanding and processing. Because, yeah, I don't even know how I made it through not eating today. It's a miracle. Basically. Thanks, Lord.